I won't go into the living room anymore. This happened about a week ago and is the exact reason why I refuse to leave my room at night or ever, if possible. I live in a four-bedroom apartment. It's a two-story apartment and the second floor is kind of like its own little space. I have the entire upstairs to myself, so I have my bedroom and a game room. I've got a private bathroom as well and I have a mini fridge and microwave. So I can live up there without ever going downstairs except to leave. The only exit in our apartment is at the bottom of the stairs. Me and all my roommates are spiritual or religious in some way or another, so a lot of our decor is based on that. We have tarot card tapestries, dream catchers, thing like that. We also have a Ouija board that sits on top of our bookshelf. My roommate, Lila, got the Ouija board from Authentic which is in Colorado. Because of that, she said we were never to open the box and if we did, the planchet and board had to be separated. I never really believed that, but out of respect for my roommate and friend, I never touched the board. Well, like I said, about a week ago. Shit went down. I went downstairs in the middle of the night to grab a snack. I was pulling an all-nighter to play a game that was just released and I needed my game or fuel. So I'm walking down the stairs and I look over the banister to see Lila sitting on the couch. The Ouija board is on the table in front of her. It's unopened. But I kind of figured it's her business, so I continue on with my shit. I turned to look at her and she was just staring, unblinking at the board. I got shivers. But this is kind of normal for her. Lila does weird shit all the time. I went to the pantry to grab some chips and then to the fridge to grab a monster. Core. Lila said. I turned around at the sound of my name. Lila was just staring at me. No expression on her face. Yeah? I asked. I stood still in the kitchen. Something about the way she looked at me made me freeze in my tracks. He needs you, she croaked. A chill ran down my spine. You need sleep, I managed to say to her. I trudged past her and back up the stairs. It wasn't until I was in my room with the door closed that I was able to relax. The hall downstairs was thick with some sort of energy. For good measure, I locked my door behind me. I put my headset on and went back to playing my game. When I went downstairs the next morning, Lila was still sitting on the couch with her Ouija board in front of her. Alice and Danny were standing in front of her. What's up? I asked, standing next to them to look at Lila. She was still just staring. Alice looked up at me, dark circles clinging to her eyes. Lila was muttering to herself and crying all night. She was so fucking loud. How did you not hear? I shrugged sheepishly. I had my headset on. Volume up to max. I looked over at Lila. She was like this when I came down last night too. She was being super creepy. Should we call 911? Danny asked. I sighed. There was no need to call 911. Maybe a priest, but not 911. I stepped over the small coffee table and grabbed Lila by the shoulder. I shook her aggressively. She snapped up to look at me and blinked a few times. She looked around confused. Good morning, Lila. I said. She stretched and cracked her shoulders. Did you guys move me? She asked genuinely. I looked over at Alice and Danny. Alice looked uncomfortable. You were like this all night, she said uneasily. Lila laughed. Sleepwalking I guess. She stood up, stretched more, then put the Ouija board back on top of the bookshelf. The rest of the day went without incident, though Lila had no recollection of what happened the night previous. I went back to my game. I had more to do. That night, before starting a long quest line, I went to grab some more snacks to refill my fridge. I took off my headset and heard some muttering. It sounded like Lila. I sighed. She was being weird again. I unlocked and opened my door. From the landing, I could see clearly into the living room. Lila was sitting on the couch. The Ouija board was out of its box and sitting in her lap. A man was sitting crisscross on the table. He had his hands over hers on the planchet and was moving it around. Lila was crying softly and muttering what he was showing her. V-E-N-G-E-A-N-C-E, -E -E, she muttered slowly. K-O-R. D-E-A-D. -E I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I pulled out my phone to take a picture. I snapped the picture but fumbled trying to put it back in my pocket and dropped it. Both Lila and the man snapped to look at me. I snatched my phone and bolted into my room, closing and locking the door. I heard someone running up the stairs, then pounding on my door. I put my head between my knees and plugged my ears. I perked up at a notification on my phone. 
It was our roommate group chat. Alice who the fuck is making all that noise? Milila is banging on my door. She won't leave me alone. I heard a door open downstairs and the banging stopped. I didn't dare open my door to investigate though. I stayed awake all night, not playing my game, but waiting with a knife in case something came in. Like I said, that was a week ago. I don't dare leave my room ever at night anymore. I only go downstairs to leave the apartment. Lila pretends everything is okay. It's like she doesn't even know what happened. The picture on my phone proves it though. I can't see the man clearly on it but you can see his outline. It's obvious there's something there. Needless to say, I'm looking to move out so if anyone wants a nice apartment with a mildly possessed roommate, let me know.